Jiu-Jitsu instructors are often invited to Panama to teach seminars. It was just a coincidence that my friend Fabio Vallello, better known as Gigantino, happened to be in town. Fabio, I know you have your own school in Austin, but here we are in Panama. What does it mean for you to travel the world doing seminars? Man, the most important thing for me is to represent my flag, represent the Gracie Baja flag, and be, al be able to learn with them and share my knowledge with them too. A uh, few things I do on my school works really well for me, share with them, make sure all the Gracie Baja schools will have like a, a good success and with a little bit of my help for sure. And what do you find when you go to these schools around the world? Are they the same as the schools in Brazil? Are they the same as your school in Austin? Man, the quality is the same. Nothing more, nothing less. All the guys really, really good, really, really tough. Some of them, they don't have the opportunity to fly all the way to states to compete on the tournaments. But I believe if they have that chance, they have like they can give like a hard work to anybody on their own division for sure. You're a, you're a really big guy. Is are you able to teach the small details for the small guys? What's Gracie Baja say? Jiu Jitsu is for everyone, right? Exactly. I believe uh, Jiu Jitsu is simple. Okay. When I try to to teach on my seminars, we have example the seminar I taught yesterday on the Gracie Baja Brisas has a black belt and white belt, no stripe on the mat. I have to teach something will be interesting for the, for the black belt, some techniques, some grips he's never seen before, and something like uh, where the white belt, uh, with the knowledge he has about jiu-jitsu, will be able to do it, you know? And I believe, I'm a big guy. I'm not like the most flexible guy, I have long legs, some of the techniques like the people like to do a kind of brim bolo doesn't work for me, I'm too big. So for those people that don't know, please tell me a little bit about your training background, who you started with and who you learned from the most. Okay, um, I started training in uh, Brasilia, the capital of Brazil, with uh, Professor Jucão, he's a black belt on the Mercer Carlos. Then with uh, 17 years old, I moved back to Rio. Then I start to train on a Gracie Baja on a headquarters. I moved to States in uh, 2004. Uh, Master Carlos just moved, I believe, a year or like two years after. Then I start to train directly with him. And helping him and Professor Marcio. Professor Marcio is the one like taught me everything. He taught me about Jiu Jitsu. He taught me, uh, gave me advices on my personal life. Gave me like really good advices on my school. A uh, few things he tells, like in my school, every time I talk to him, changes completely. You know, uh, his uh, vision in jiu-jitsu, in jiu-jitsu business, in jiu-jitsu school, it's unbelievable. And I own a lot for them, you know. Uh, Master Carlos with like a, a, a being a, a the best father to all of us, you know, and take care of us uh, under his wings and Marshall to share his knowledge with me with like everything he can, you know, and help me a lot, okay? On, uh, and as like for the, for the tournaments, always we had like a really good, strong team, you know, good training partners, you know. We uh, always, I train in director with, uh, with the champions. I, I train with Roger a bunch of times, uh, Braulio. They are my favorite training partners, you know, I'm never able to do anything against them, but every time, like, I try hard as I can, you know, it motivates me a lot. I believe Jiu-Jitsu is like that, it's a big family, you know, we help each other, and I, I see this is very strong inside the Gracie Baja. So, Paulo, you're famous for one sweep. Tell me about it. Yeah, when I started competi uh, competing, I started doing a position to try to be very good on the position. So I started doing a sweep. First I started uh, from the top on the fights, doing like a tomonage and do the sweep. But then the fight, when we train, we train on the ground. So we started the fight on the knees. So I did the sweep, more on focus on the knees. And then people start sitting for defend the sweep because they know I'm going to do that sweep. And then I just for do the on the city when the people sit. And then the people, okay, I'm gonna stand. So I adjust the position for the stand, and I do that sweep when the people get stand and do the arm lock. That's very nice. And also, when the people try to block that sweep, I make a, a variation, it's very good too. 
So for the people that maybe don't know what a tomonage is, can we start from a tomonage? Yeah, for sure. Okay. You lay here on the judo. I usually like fake it. I'm gonna go like a, a hip throw, and the people try to go to that. Yeah. And then I come and put it here, the foot. And mount. Okay. So in jiu-jitsu, we start on our knees? Or? Yeah, yeah, because in jiu-jitsu, we start on the knees. So I'm gonna show the position I do from the knees. Okay, I usually go to the open guard and do basically the same. Both foot on the, the ribs and just go like this. So then people start to expect it, right? Yeah, start to expect And sit, you can sit like trying to do very good base. Okay, so you see it, and do, like make base, so I do different. I just pull you here, and I put you there. Then you added the arm lock to it, right? Yeah, because the people realize if they sit or get on their knee, I'm gonna sweep them. So they start doing the standing. Okay, let's move. Okay, just lift, stand, yeah. And here. Here I do the variation. I put like the hood. Here, here. Very good. And also when the people try to block the position because I make the hooks, like make the base, I'm gonna show so, a little variation. Stand, I make you pause. So for me now to pull you is hard. So what I gonna do? I just stretch my leg and sweep you. And also I have the arm. Mm -hmm. You never give up the arm. Huh? Oh yeah, no man. Cabelinho, <laughs> uh, Gracie Barra. First time saw me in the Panamas in the in the Gracie Barra Rivine. He came to me. Hey Paulo, you still doing the arm locks? <laughs> say, yeah man, the same. <laughs> yeah because always man, I grab the the shoulder and you saw it. I have a good grip over there, and I didn't, I didn't release, yeah, didn't release, release your arm. So over the years, I've seen a few people doing this sweep to arm lock. Oftentimes, they call it the helicopter arm bar. Do you call it that? Yeah, at the time, you don't put names, but they, yeah, the people start put the helicopter arm bar. Do you think you were the first one to do this technique? Yeah, at the time, I think so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I started doing the position like in 1996, something like that. It was very good. I remember I got my brown belt for, because of that. I remember one instructor. Come back to one black belt, come to the Gracie Barra, and the guy called me to, to train. At the time, I was purple belt. I was over there, I started training him, did that sweep and get the arm bar. He escaped, but after training, he go sit with Carlos and talk to Carlos. And then Carlos called me, hey, Paulo, come here. I stopped this guy, he trained very well. You tomorrow can come with the brown belt. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's very good. What are the details when you lift the guy up and you have your feet on both hips yeah. to transfer to the arm lock? Yeah, I have the control with the leg, left leg, so the guy don't fall. Mm -hmm. And with my right leg, my right foot, I twist my foot. So, and because you have all your balance over my foot, it's easy for me so to, to twist you. And then I let you fall with the left leg, and it goes to the arm. I know it's a little difficult to do slow, but can we try one more time? Yeah, man, I can do it slow. <laughs> and here, I bring your base here. Lift you, you see? I twist the foot and go. Do you think it's difficult if you're doing with somebody heavier than you? No, that's okay. You still do. Yeah. <laughs> nice. I usually, man, I, I won a lot of tournaments with the position. <laughs> that's very good. Can you see it one last time? Yeah, man, for sure. What's your Okay. Yeah. Foot. <laughs> Thank you, man. This is your train station, your canvas, your metronome. 
your cable bridge, the steel threads of your past suspending the blueprints of your future. Your courtroom bench, you pass sentences to all those that accept mediocrity. You traverse the road less traveled, every win, a friendly hitchhiker, every loss, an unwanted stowaway. Your country. Defend what you have built. The natural ingredients in Defense Soap proven effective against grappling related skin infections. Go to DefenseSoap.com to learn more. What are these hanging on the wall over here? Uh, those uh, pieces of art done in fabric are called molas. They're uh, made by the Kuna Indians, which are uh, one of the natives, uh, natives here in Panama. Uh, actually, they're one of the purest races in, or ethnic groups in the world. Uh, and they kept the same for thousands of years. They, that's something you will only find here in Panama. If you see it elsewhere in the world, it was made here. It's their way of expressing art. You can find it on clothing, on frames, on accessories, on decorations, and it's all made here out of fabric. As you can see, they do it on, on purses and shirts and accessories. Okay, Paolo, you have something else to show today? Yeah, I have a position. Uh, at the time, it was different. People would press this position too much. I remember Luca Tala told me, hey, Paolo, why are we doing the position that way? Instead to go, when the guy's in the turtle, instead to go to the back and try to choke, make the hooks, I do an inverted triangle. The people wa think was weird at the time, but the people start to develop the position. And a lot of people do today. Okay, let's go. In the turtle, I grab the belt, I come to the side. My knee come to close your leg, and my other leg come between your, leg and your arm and your head. I grab your arm, fall back, and close the triangle. And I Like it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you see one more time? Yeah. Also, I do this position too. When I hit him the front, I feed the guy with the leg. So everybody go to my leg to try to took me down. Mm -hmm. So I come. Nice, yeah. Nice yeah. surprise. Yeah, I give the leg to the guy. Oh, my leg! <laughs> <laughs> and go and yeah. I got the triangle. Cool. One last time? Okay. You're here, you come, you grab your arm, fall back, and close the trail. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, man. <laughs> So the average person doesn't know a lot about Panama. Everybody knows about the canal, and a lot of people also know about the Panama hat. That's true. Uh, I get guests and people coming from all over the world. Diego, I want the famous Panama hat, Panama hat, and they're actually looking for this hat right here. And surprisingly, it's called the Panama hat, but it's not Panamanian. Uh, the actual Panama hat, or the folkloric Panamanian hat, is this one right here. A little bit more colorful and a different form. This, this is a, a real Panama hat. This is what they use as part of our folklore. And both hats are different, and both hats can get really expensive too. Uh, right now we're in a, we're in a tourist place where uh, this hat goes for about $35. But this is a commercial hat. If you go to a little town in the countryside called La Yeguada, where this hat was born, and hats there are custom made. They measure your head and everything. And hats can go up to 150 to 160 dollars for one of these. And the thing is they're handmade and there's different types of stitches and patterns that they use on this hat. And this is the real Panamanian hat. The other one is called Panama hat by name, but it's not really Panamanian. It wasn't made here, it was made elsewhere. Along with Paolo, Marco Perez has done a lot of work growing jiu-jitsu in Panama. Please tell me your name and a little bit about your training history in Panama. Mi nombre es Marcos Pérez. Tengo ya 13 años entrenando Jiu-Jitsu. Comencé en la Academia Gracie Barra Panamá antes, inicial no, con el profesor Paulo y profesor Héctor. Eh, después seguí año tras año compitiendo internacionalmente hasta llegar a participar en Panamericanos de Jiu-Jitsu. Fui campeón europeo, estatal de Florida y de ahí hace cinco años 
tomé la decisión de abrir la, la academia que tengo actualmente. Eh, estoy asociado con, Gracie Barra, con, la, con la academia Gracie Barra Brisas, eh, en, un, en una comunidad muy grande. Tengo muchos estudiantes, competimos y ya tengo campeones de MMA, eh, de Jiu Jitsu, nacionalmente, y yo sigo compitiendo internacionalmente. Jiu Jitsu is all over the world now. What is unique about Jiu Jitsu in Panama? Lo, lo, lo bonito del Jiu Jitsu único es que el, el país de nosotros es tan chico que el compartir el Jiu Jitsu unos amigos con otros amigos se vuelve muy, muy, muy satisfactorio, uno aprende más. La comunidad de Jiu Jitsu de Panamá es chica, debería ir creciendo más. Eh, nosotros los panameños tenemos una sangre de guerreros, ¿verdad? siento que eso es algo único en Panamá. Hay muchos campeones de boxeo y, y con todo, y muchos tienen que trabajar y a la vez entrenar y con todo y eso sobresalen. O sea, yo siento que la sangre de nosotros es una sangre muy fuerte y por eso que somos aguerridos y entrenamos fuerte y cuando competimos siempre traemos o medallas o, 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 o buenas posiciones. Why should people come from other countries to visit and train Jiu Jitsu in Panama? Bueno, es importante, eh, la persona debe venir a Panamá a entrenar Jiu Jitsu porque nosotros somos un centro, un centro donde de, 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 por lo menos tenemos lo que es el aeropuerto, eh, el, el canal de Panamá, y, y somos un, un centro turístico. Aquí llegan personas de, de muchos países que saben artes marciales, especialmente Jiu Jitsu. Eh, tenemos una, una cultura muy buena, tenemos un sistema bancario muy poderoso, tenemos una, una economía establecida, tenemos lugares turísticos, y el, el clima también es un clima eh, muy, 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 muy bueno para vivir. Te queremos las gracias a, a Jake, Dave de Puro Videos por estar aquí compartiendo con nosotros y brindarle al mundo que conozcan a Panamá. Los invi invitamos que vengan a todos a entrenar. Tenemos muy buenos atletas aquí y queremos que el Jiu Jitsu brasileño siga creciendo. Os So I was also kind of surprised that Panama is not just full of Panamanians, but there's a lot of different cultures mixed together. That's true. Uh, Panama is the center of, if you want to put it that way, and it's a little bit selfish to say if it's the center of the world. Everything goes through here. And said that, uh, it's very difficult just to show Panamanian culture once you come here. We, for example, in religions, we celebrate holidays from everywhere, from uh, Hanukkah, Rosh Hashanah, Ramadan, Chinese New Year is big, and, and our, our own uh, holidays. Uh, and the thing is, it's very funny. Actually, I was in college and my roommate was Panamanian, but she was Chinese, and people wouldn't understand. She, she looked Chinese, she had a Chinese name, they wouldn't understand she was Panamanian. The thing here is, come to Panama and you find the world here. You find everyone here. Good thing, you'll find Jiu Jitsu here. So, and any other martial art, and any other culture, any other type of food, religion, you'll find it here.
Ha, <laughs> The phrase economic center was repeated to me over and over while I was in Panama. It's clear that the canal and airport make Panama a center of tourism and trade for Central America. Jiu-Jitsu hasn't been in the country for long, but it's clear that Paulo Castro is doing a great job, and sometime in the very near future, Panama will also be a center of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. If you're looking to take a Jiu-Jitsu vacation, you'd be hard-pressed to find a better place than Panama. Accommodations graciously provided by the Beach House Panama. Friendly staff, comfortable rooms, and a picturesque view of Panama City. <laughs> 